Today we are starting the series of lectures on nephrology, especially pathology of the renal system. And we'll, we will start our discussion with the pathologies related with the glomerular injuries, right? Especially our topic will be around glomerulopathies. Glomerulopathies and glomerulonephritis, right? Before I really go into detail of glomerulonephritis or glomerulopathy, I want to introduce the concept that once you injure the glomerulus, whatever the mechanism of injury, whenever you injure the glomerulus, right, what is the clinical problem starting there? Is that right? Let me draw the basic structure of glomerulus. You know glomeruli are filtration unit in the kidney. Yeah. One kidney has how many glomeruli? Question goes to... Muhammad. Oh, I think you have been counting that. Right. So, he is right that one kidney has about 1.2 million nephrons and together both kidneys may have 2 to 2 and a half millions nephron. So, I am not going to draw all of them. I will just draw one glomerulus and the same principle will be applied to the rest of the glomeruli on the both kidney. Right. So, let us suppose that this is glomerular capillary, right? Here the blood is coming from afferent arteriole. Here the blood is going out to efferent. Yes, please, efferent arteriole. And here is your glomerular basement, GBM, glomerular basement membrane. And here is your Bowman's capsule or urinary space right and here is connective tissue which is called mesangium what is that mesangium is that right now of course you know capillary is lined by which cells endothelial cells you have to be with me and this side of the basement membrane is lined by special type of cells. What are these cells? These are podocytes or epithelial cells. Right? These are visceral epithelial cells. And here in the Bowman space, these are parietal epithelial cells. And of course, now there is the beginning of proximal convoluted tubule and remaining nephron. Now, one thing which should be clear that when we are talking about the glomerular diseases, we must be very, very clear about that this filtration membrane. Because glomerular diseases alter the characteristics of these filtration membranes. Normally, it has three components endothelial cells, then there is glomerular basement membrane, and then there is epithelial cells, right? This endothelial cells, these are fenestrated cells. When we, when we say endothelial cells are fenestrated cells, it means that there are fenestrations present within the endothelial cells. What are fenestrations? Fenestrations are the pores, right? These endothelial cells are porous. These endothelial cells are porous. They are having fenestrations, right? And one fenestration, for example, this is one fenestration, but there are thousands and thousands of fenestrations present in every endothelial cell. This fenestration, one fenestration has a size of about 70 to 100 nanometer. Is that right? So this is the fenestration size. Opposed to that, the size at this side, epithelial cells, there are filtration slit. You know, these two points between the epithelial cells, they are called filtration slits. Let me tell you how they are applied there. Can you give me your copy? Uh, can you give me your copy? Right. Let's suppose this is glomerular basement membrane, right? And this is podo site. I think it is congenitally defected. Now, this is podocyte. 
podocyte is applied under it. Is that right? Now, in between the podocytes, other podocyte and this podocyte, they will interdigitate their foot processes, right? So what really happens that under the glomerular basement membrane, you have podocytes which are interdigitating like this, right? And with the fingertips, they are sticking with the glomerular basement membrane. Why I'm saying that with the fingertips, they are sticking with the glomerular basement membrane because in some glomerular diseases, right, these molecules which are holding the podocyte with the glomerular basement membrane, these molecules become defective and podocytes fall away. And of course, that will be a tragedy. So what I'm saying, the podocytes are just applied on the glomerular basement membrane on the Bowman capsule side and they are interdigitating process and where are the filtration slits? Filtration slits are the gaps between the interdigitations. For example, the, in between my fingers, you find there are gaps. These gaps, these gaps are called filtration slits. slits. So we can say the substances are allowed to pass through fenestrations here and eventually they have to pass through this filtration slits and until podocytes are properly applied on the basement membrane, there will be physiological filtration. But if podocytes or their foot processes, which, we, which I call fingertips or foot processes, technically speaking, foot processes of these cells, if they detach, then it will become more permeable. Now, the size of the filtration slit is about 20 to 30 nanometer. And this was, on endothelial cells, this was 70 to 100 nanometer. Now you know the barrier size here is size barrier 70 to 100 and here size barrier is 20. Is that clear? Now, another important point is that all the things which have to pass through that, they have to be small enough to pass through these barriers. Is that right? There is one more mechanism which also determines the barrier to the filtration. One barrier we have discussed the size barrier size at this point and size at this point. So size of these pores act as a barrier for filtration. There is one more mechanism of barrier. That barrier is negative charges. There are negative charges on this endothelial cell, the negative charges on the glomerular basement membrane, and there are negative charges on the epithelial cells. So we say there are many, many negatively charged molecules present on this filtration membrane at multiple levels. Now these negative charges repel the negative molecules, negatively charged molecules. You know plasma proteins are normally at physiological pH, plasma proteins are charged negatively. So plasma proteins are repelled by these negative charges. So any molecule or plasma protein or RBCs, WBCs or platelets or any substance which has to go down, it has to face the size barrier as well as charge barrier. Am I clear? Let me talk about especially albumin. The molecular size of the albumin is just enough to pass through the size barrier. Molecular size of the albumin, which is about 70 kilo delton, the molecular weight of the albumin, that is just enough to allow the albumin molecule to pass through these barriers due to their size. But normally albumin does not leak out. Why? Because albumin is negatively charged and these membranes are also negatively charged. So albumin is repelled. Another explanation of this is there is a disease called minimal change glomerulopathy. In that disease, there is no big structural defect here. The real problem in that disease is that negative charges are neutralized. As soon as negative charges are neutralized, a lot of albumin start leaking down. Hold this concept is clear? No problem. After this uh, barrier discussion, now we come to uh, different patient with different degree